Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail, just coming back to you. Uh, I want to talk once more about the vote. You know, I'm sure as we go through this, there continue to be, um, you know, developments, new understandings, new insights, corrections even um, to understanding that we had. Uh, so I want to go through this, but what I want to do is um, I actually want to tie to the overall thesis and even what we've been through for two years and sort of the struggle between the longs and the shorts for two years, the struggle to end corruption. Um, and for me, what you're going to hear is why I'm landing on a certain vote. Um, if you've seen kind of my other videos, you know that I respect that there are going to be good apes who disagree with me. So I'm not saying anyone needs to have my point of view. But, you know, if you want to at least see my logic, my thesis, as it were, on um, what I believe are the levers at play, what I believe will end uh, the corrupt shorts, you know, force them to capitulate and give up, and why that then informs my vote. Uh, you know, I've, I've had some people kind of try to, well, <clears throat> not even so negative as accusing me. I, I've had some people misunderstand me and think, oh, you know, you keep talking about fundamentals. You know, I'm not in this for a fundamentals play. I'm in this for a squeeze or whatever. What I'm going to do today is describe for you why I believe um, all of this is related and why ultimately, you know, kind of for me, my philosophy of what's the best way to sort of force the shorts to say, okay, I give up and cry uncle. Uh, and that's all going to be related. But then that actually informs my vote. So that's why I need to tie that together for you so you can see why this is my point of view. Um, and I also want to just talk about all of the pieces of this. If you think about like there's this uh, child's toy my kids had when they were little. It's If you can picture this thing, it's like all these little gears and they turn in circles. And if the teeth of the gears all connect, then all the gears turn. But if you take one of them out, you know, some of the gears are no longer connected and they don't turn. So what I want to describe is what I see is all the gears and how if you get them all in place, you know, the squeeze actually kind of is what happens. Uh, so what will we cover? I do want to, you know, cover that thesis um, for AMC. By now you've heard it, but actually I don't know if you've seen all the angles of it in the way I'm going to show it. Uh, and I'll point to some past write-ups I had done as well if you end up wanting to click a little deeper. Um, what's more is I'm going to revisit the APE announcement from last August. I also think that relates to why I land on a certain vote here. Um, you can kind of look at how the market reacted to the idea of APE at the time, and I think that's relevant. So we're going to look at that. I'm going to discuss, um, you know, not just how is the short thesis ended, but what are all those gears? What are the levers at play? Uh, and then I want to actually correct something that I've gotten wrong. So, you know, stinks to have to say that uh, on one of the vote videos, there's a piece of the filing that I want to correct. And so I don't love having to do that, but you've heard me say in other videos, don't trust me, dig deep, do your own DD. And there were a couple other sharp eyes who caught something that I missed. Um, and unfortunately, you know, that's on me. I didn't scroll to the bottom of one of the filings and um, there's, a, there's a really critical piece. I have since gone and um, validated a couple things with AMC Investor Relations directly. So if you ever email them, uh, you know, they're pretty responsive. They support us. They try to help clarify things for us. And so, you know, I've got some information directly from um, Investor Relations that will help me clarify my own error. But actually, it does not change how I'm voting. I just want to be transparent with you guys and have the integrity to kind of let's get the real facts out there. And so in case you disagree with me, at least you've got the full set of facts and, and I haven't like misled anybody or anything like that. And then I'll end with some final thoughts. OK, so first off, you know, I've had some people respond to me, um, whether on YouTube or on Twitter. I often kind of talk about the fundamentals of AMC. In fact, what I'd rather spend most of my time doing is talking about the movies that are coming and how the revenues are tracking. Um, those are really great right now, by the way. Check box office mojo again. You can see how far ahead of last year we're tracking. In fact, this is already just obviously going to be the best Q1 we've ever had post-COVID. It's, it's just not even, it's not even in question. I feel comfortable saying that. Um, and we'll be, you know, in terms of business results, uh, one of our better quarters uh, since, since COVID. Um, and so one of the things that I believe in is, you, you know, if you go back to even before apes came along, the shorts uh, and the hedge funds and everybody, they thought they had a home run here, right? They thought they could run this company into the ground and there was going to be bankruptcy. And, you know, maybe you've seen that uh, shorts effectively don't really pay taxes on a company if the stock truly goes to zero. It's a whole um, kind of wrinkly layered thing. 
But so they thought they had their home run, and then apes came along. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So people who kind of say, you know, retail, you're talking too much about fundamentals. I'm in this for a squeeze play. What I want to show you today is why I believe the fundamentals are the squeeze and why that relates. And this, I think, ultimately is what really gets down to where some of us, um, even in 2021 on the vote um, and now on this vote, probably land on different sides of an aisle in a way. Um, if your view is we want to never have any more shares and that's what's going to cause a squeeze, then yeah, you tend to land on a no vote on some of these things. If your view is like mine, that actually there are, um, is a much stronger path to forcing the shorts to give up. And the whole short thesis was they were going to hold until bankruptcy. And our thesis is we're going to hold until the shorts have to quit. Well, you need AMC to not go bankrupt for that. And you need profits. And I'm going to talk about some of that. So just you're going to hear from me basically, um, I, I don't think you separate these two things. I don't think they're exclusive. So people who say, you know, I'm not in this for a fundamental play. You, you just talk about fundamentals. I'm in this for the squeeze. I'm actually in this for the squeeze as well. And I'm showing you why I believe we'll get there and how that happens. Um, first, there was a Reddit I had done. So you can kind of see that here if you want to, I don't know, pause the screen and you can kind of go find that. Um, that really describes uh, why, and geez, this was all the way back in August of 2021. And I described uh, why ultimately time was on our side, time's on the side of the longs, what was working against the shorts. And in a minute, I'm gonna just kind of illustrate that a little bit more uh, visually. But uh, here are kind of the four level levers that you would find in that Reddit. Uh, and you, you'd kind of see them each explained a little bit in a little more detail. So first of all, you, you know about cost to borrow. And holy cow, if you're tracking cost to borrow right now, you see how high that's getting. It's honestly, it's getting insane. And you can imagine, um, you know, I've confirmed with multiple brokers that cost to borrow is paid daily. So just take the percent that you see, um, you know, like today it was on, approaching 700%, like on Webull. And then I know the average on Ortex was somewhere around that zone too. Um, take that and divide by 365 essentially and you get to a daily amount that Shorty is burning cash by the day. And some of you have seen also like my posts or some other people's uh, posts where our brokers are offering us a cut of that and we would get paid daily. Now, you know, go see my video on, on fully paid lending and why I personally am not loaning out my shares, but just saying that I've confirmed, you know, cost to borrow is a real pressure against the shorts. It's, a, it's burning cash. There's cash going out the door. You never want that uh, if you can avoid it. Um, there's something called mark to market accounting. I'll come back to that in a little bit where I show this all visually and just think of those gears and how all the gears come together. But hold on to that thought. Mark to market accounting is going to matter or you can go to that Reddit for a little more information on that. Uh, something else called opportunity cost, same. I'll describe that a little more in a minute. Uh, but just the idea, if your money is tied up on say project A, you cannot put it towards project B and you miss out on other opportunities. And in the world of finance, there's an actual cost to that so that you can make good decisions with your money. And so there's this idea of opportunity cost. And it's really like if I have my money tied up in something that makes me $10 and I, an opportunity comes along where I could have made $20, boy, it'd be nice to put my money over there. But if I'm stuck, now think about what's the squeeze, right? The squeeze is if I cover, I start losing because the price skyrockets, so I'm kind of stuck. Uh, so if I'm stuck, now I can't invest my money elsewhere. And, and that's the idea of opportunity cost. Um, liquidity and margins, you probably heard over and over and over about margin calls, leverage, um, whether the shorts can stay liquid. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then there's one for us, which is cash flow. Uh, you can see this Reddit was from August of 21. All the way back there, I was saying if AMC gets to positive cash flows, the shorts are absolutely done. So there's a little tip of my hand um, showing you my cards of what I believe is the ultimate just ace in the hole for AMC. Okay. First, let's come back though. Let's look at what happened when Adam announced APE. So if you remember, that was um, August 4th uh, last year, I believe. So uh, you can see here, I've highlighted kind of a one, two, three. Uh, that little E at the bottom, this was just the view off my phone uh, from Webull. And you can see, um, by the way, Webull is not my broker. Just I use them on the phone because it's just an easy visual where I track the charts. They are, as, to my understanding, a pay for order flow broker. So, you know, just, Maybe be thoughtful about where you want to have your money. Um, but okay, so the earnings was August 4th. And if you recall, um, that is the sort of call where Adam announced APE. So that got announced after hours. And so there we go. So Adam announced APE after hours the next day at market open. So earnings was, um, 
I'll actually say I think there was a lot of FOMO coming into that earnings. I recall talking about that with a lot of my, uh, let's say, apes that I'm closer to. Um, and w some of us believed there was people who, you know, you go into an AMC earnings and everyone knows if, if there's any surprises to the positive side, if uh, whether earnings or there's some announcement and things um, are good, then you just know AMC is going to fly. But the reverse side of that is if someone gets in on a FOMO play and there aren't the kind of surprises they're expecting or maybe AMC hasn't yet turned profitable or whatever, um, that if they're just in it for a quick FOMO play, then they're going to get back out quickly too. And so my opinion was, um, actually, let me back up. The other thing is we know that we pretty often get short attacked uh, off of earnings. You know, there, there's a whole sentiment um, play where Shorty, you know, wants to break us mentally. And so they, they like to take away any possible celebration. That's opinion there, but um, you can kind of look at some of the data that maybe backs up my opinion. But anyway, whatever happened, um, you know, Adam announces Ape the evening of the 4th. At market open on the 5th, uh, everything drops. However, there was, um, I think that's about the time I posted my DD on Ape that I've shared in another video. You can go find me on Reddit, like a really deep dive on Ape. And as, as all of us Apes, as uh, the market itself started to digest what Ape really was, then you can see on that same day, so now I'm kind of to number two, it, you know, the bottom of that wick, it had dropped to 1014. That, that's kind of uh, at the bottom of the screen here, you can see. But then I think what happened is, um, in fact, I remember even some media came out and said, oh, Adam is kind of a genius here. Uh, he's just gotten access to capital. You've heard me talk in a lot of videos about access to capital. You know, what stops you from going bankrupt? You know, just think in your own life. You get an electric bill, and you don't want the electricity turned off, what do you need? Well, you need access to money. You've got to be able, whether you are putting that on a credit card or whether you're putting that, you know, straight out of your checking account or your savings account or you're getting a friend to loan you some money, whatever it is, you've got to have the cash to pay that bill. Um, and if a company has access to cash, then one, they're never going bankrupt. And two, they have an opportunity not only to just defensively not go bankrupt, but to be on the offense. You've heard Adam talk about being on the offense and you've seen the investments he's made, like in Saudi Arabia, you've seen, uh, you know, him purchasing new properties in LA and Boston and other things like that. So the shorts know, and the market knows, if Adam has access to capital, uh, if, if the board has access to do some strategic things and or pay down debt, um, then they're not going bankrupt, and that is going to put a lot of pressure on the shorts, and that's when the longs start piling in as well. So either you get shorts giving up or you get longs piling in, and either one puts upward pressure on the stock. So you can see here I'm saying, and I, I can tell you, you, go back, it was timed that day where, you know, there was a response to earnings, all the FOMO people got out, and then suddenly the media was like, wait a second, Adam actually, and you could see them realizing it in real time too, um, Adam actually just created access to capital for AMC, and then boom, look at that candle that day where we shot up, and that's 37% we shot from um, bottom to top, or I think that was from bottom to close or something. I'd have to go back and look at what I was comparing. But then the next day, we kept going. And so by the time the market really reacts to the idea of APE and the fact that AMC was now going to have capital, and you can kind of see a couple days later on this chart where we actually um, were there again, that was a 67% run in just like a day and a half because the market said, oh my gosh, AMC is definitely not going bankrupt. They're going to have capital. And you can see since then, um, I think since then we've paid down something close to $200 million in debt. It may even be over $200 million. Um, overall, by the way, since the peak, which some of that's before Ape, Adam has paid down $300 million of debt. Um, and by the way, you know, I've gotten trolled a few times, and I know who's doing it. Um, so if you're listening, I know who you are, and I know who's doing this. But, um, oh, how come you guys are talking about Adam paying debt? When has he ever actually said he's going to do that? Look, I'm presenting scenarios. I've been very clear on presenting scenarios. I don't really care whether he said it or not. First, his behavior has shown they've paid down $300 million already, and I'm counting that in future sort of um, forecasts of earnings because that goes straight to the bottom line when you're not paying out uh, interest payments. Uh, and then I'm just talking about the possibility. And, and in a lot of this, you're going to hear me talk about even the possibility of AMC uh, investing and turning profitable through mergers and acquisitions, in investment in new property, investment in um, diversification of new revenue streams, 
or the possibility of paying off debt, that would have to scare the heck out of you if you're a short. You can argue with me all day long. Has he said that? Has he committed to that? Is that actually going to happen? I don't really care, to be honest. Just the fact that he could do it, if I was a short, I'd have a hard time sleeping at night. So that's why I keep coming back to access to capital as well. So just I want to cement in your brain when the market realized AMC had access to capital through APE, this is the response. It ran 67% in about a day and a half. So that's what the market thinks about when AMC has access to capital, okay? Let's come back to that in a little bit. So I showed in another video, so I'll go through this one pretty fast, um, what I believe sort of are the end of the short thesis. The first one is retail holding, you know, um, and we're, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But ultimately, um, you know, we talked about apes saving AMC, right? And, and you've heard that out there a little bit. So there's two things that I would ask you to consider. First off, when did you buy in? And even when did most apes, let's say the, the I don't know, OG apes or whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of us came in at the very end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021. That's when I came in. Um, and then a lot of people have come in since. And honestly, if you've come in even just in the last few days, I love it. I'm glad you're here. First, I want to draw attention to the fact, when did COVID start? When did things close down? Guys, that was like a year before most of us got in. So first off, let's give credit where it's due. Adam and the board navigated all of 2020 and closures and no revenue whatsoever before the apes really came along and before anybody knew about this movement. So first, we have to recognize that. I think personally that that's important. That got AMC, you know, I'll just call that like treading water. You know, they kept their head above water, but um, obviously there was the threat of sinking. And then we came along. And so it's, it's true to say apes uh, saved the company, and I think we should celebrate that. But I think it's also true to say the company was only alive at that point for us to save because of the moves of this leadership team. And I, I personally think that's ma that matters, and it's also what's earned um, my trust in them. So we come along, and why does HODL matter? Here's the thing. Come back to that access to capital. Let's say your shares are driven into the ground by the shorts, and I don't know, they're all the way down at a dollar. Well, then you go, let's say you need a million dollars. Okay, now you gotta sell a million shares to get that million dollars. But what if apes came along and were holding and the shares were at $7? Well, you can hear how there's a lot less shares you have to sell to get that same million dollars if you need it. Um, and so what we provided was strength in the stock price, but ultimately that provided access to capital. There's a reason, guys, I keep repeating this over and over. The reason AMC hasn't gone bankrupt is they've had the cash to pay the bills. And you either get the cash through profits or you get it through leveraging your assets or you get it through sale of equities. Okay, what's the next thing that kills the short thesis? Cost to borrow. We've talked about how the shorts are um, burning cash by the day. And holy cow, uh, by today's rate, you know, I just did some quick math. Um, don't quote me on this because it was, you know, what I'll call napkin math, but Shorts right now are burning something like $20 million a day just to hold how many borrowed shares there are out there. Uh, that's pretty crazy to me. And, you know, I mean, $20 million total across all shorts. There's, there's an awful lot of them, too. But, um, you know, it doesn't cost $20 million a day for us to be long. I'll put it that way. So I'd much rather be long than short when they're burning that much cash. So that's a, that's a short thesis killer. It puts pressure on them. You can't burn cash forever. Um, a healthy balance sheet. Uh, you know, if AMC gets healthy and strong, that kills the short thesis. And I've talked in other videos how that comes with access to capital, um, <laughs> which is why then access to capital itself, um, you know, fixes or ends the short thesis. And finally, profits. So um, flew through that because we're going to touch on those and put those gears together here in a minute. But before we do, one other uh, Reddit I might direct you towards um, Guys, I'm tiny on Reddit. I don't really care about followers or whatever. That's not the point. I want people to be educated. You know, I don't even know if people can make money on Reddit. So this isn't about followers. This isn't about getting paid. This is about sharing with you my thoughts. And you can see as far back as December of 2021, I would combine this with the other Reddit I showed you a minute ago. And you can see just this bulleted list of what I went through. And this one's even more detailed. I went through, and, and if you don't know what these terms mean, or you just want to learn a little bit more about them, I explained all of these. And in particular, um, margin, because people talk so much about margin calls, uh, you know, I'll, I'll even share just a, a quick funny story that you would see in that Reddit. I once had a margin call for like a dollar. 
Um, I've been margin called. So margin call doesn't always mean like you close down shop and everything gets covered and all of that. Um, and, and I've never been short. You can get margin called on the long side too. Like if you've borrowed money to be in a position and you get out of, out of balance. So I describe in that Reddit how it's kind of like a teeter-totter that you've got to keep in balance. On the one side is uh, basically how much you've borrowed. On the other side is how much you own. And if you keep those things in balance, then your broker leaves you alone. If you get out of balance, you get a margin call. And you've either got to sell positions you know, uh, to get that teeter-totter back in balance. So just think of that as like taking weight off of one side. Um, or you've got to contribute cash. That's more like putting weight on the other side. So go there if you want to learn more, but you'll see, and, and think about some things you see here, tapering, interest rates, leverage. Some of this, you know, I was talking about this late 2021, um, and people I was with, we were all talking about it privately long before that. Uh, so this is just one of those things where if you look at all that's happened in the total market, apes were calling this stuff out, you know, two years before it happened. Uh, so go there because that's that's going to give you a deeper understanding. I'd almost even like pause the video and do some deep reading and then come back because now I'm going to put that all together. So um, it looks like I messed up on animation. There's one little arrow that's going to sit out there uh, as a preview. That's, that'll just be a tease, but we'll go through this. So back then I had called this Nightmare on Short Street. I think that's in that Reddit even. Uh, I know I had this in some posting way back there. And I wanted people to just understand, again, all those gears and how it comes together. Because if you have a right understanding of all of it, uh, just think of it like a, a board game. Whenever I play like a strategy board game, um, I think my family gets a little annoyed because I, I win more often than not. And the reason you can win at strategy uh, games is you just figure out what are sort of the conditions for success. And so that's what I want to show you here is what are the conditions for success and really the conditions for the squeeze itself. And this will tell you why I talk so much about fundamentals and why I celebrate when the industry is turning around and all of that and why ultimately I'm voting the way I am on this conversion um, and that that is for me tied to the squeeze. So let's go through that. First off, I talked about buy and hold. You know, from day one, that's always been the thesis. People who were even in this before me and I go back to kind of December 20, January 21, um, shared that story how at that time I didn't even know what a squeeze was. I was in AMC as a turnaround play, uh, kind of a COVID reopening play, and then just learned about the movement and stayed for change. That's why I'm still here. Um, and because I believe that it may squeeze. So why buy and hold? Um, I already mentioned that uh, by retail refusing to sell, we didn't give shorts the opportunity to get that home run. We sort of in some ways propped up the price of AMC shares. Uh, and by propped up, I don't mean in any um, you know unethical way. We just said, hey, I'm not selling. And so you can't uh, create undue selling pressure on this stock and drive the price into the ground. I'm creating buying pressure and holding pressure that keeps the stock uh, you know, propped up. And so that then leads to, if you look back at all the different times where Adam was able to kind of get the capital he needed to make the company um, keep going. And I'll be honest, guys, he's even said publicly from time to time, <clears throat> there were times he refinanced debt and it was uh, banks were friendly to him to say, you know what, okay, we do believe that you are, uh, let's say your risk profile has been lowered enough that we can give refinance your debt because we see that you have this passionate retail following. Us being around not only helped keep the stock price up, but actually even enabled him to sort of restructure and refinance and do things that have kept AMC around today. So we've had this symbiotic relationship where we help each other, um, which again actually relates, by the way, to why I'm going to vote a certain way. It's not only about me, it's about this company I love, and if they do well, I do well. And if I hold, they do well. And so see how we both kind of benefit each other. So um, what happens in that case? You know, and there, let's be real, the story of this has kind of unfolded over, over the years. Uh, I believe there was some FOMO, there was a lot of uh, buy pressure, but that means this deeply shorted stock actually increases in value. And then what happens? So I talked about mark to market. Go to that first Reddit and you can kind of learn about mark to market. But the simple version is, um, and in fact, if you go there, you'll learn a little bit more about even the 2008, 2009, kind of the housing collapse and uh, you know how the whole market kind of collapsed back then, that was deeply connected to mark to market losses. So what happens is, let's say that um, you're a bank and you have a whole bunch of loans you're holding on to. 
on houses. And you know, maybe a loan was taken out on a house that was worth, uh, I don't know, five hundred thousand dollars. And so <clears throat> you you value that property. And then what happens if now the the house is only worth three hundred thousand dollars? Well, there's that's the market. The market is saying the house is worth only three hundred thousand dollars. So if you got this loan against an asset and now you reduce the value of the asset on your books. So the banks were having to do this on their books. And hedge funds, you know, big, big institutions have to update their books and what their, uh, you know, borrowing is against. Well, if that house now has gone down by, you know, in this case, I, I was saying from 500 to 300, now you, you bring that asset down on your books. And remember that teeter-totter on margins, um, it gets you out of balance and, and you can get in trouble in a hurry. It basically starts making it look like you have a lot more debt and a lot less assets to back up that debt. So why does that matter? Uh, well, I just talked about the reduction in asset value, and I just talked about how that then, so think about that teeter-totter. If the asset side of your uh, books goes down, but your debt side does not go down, now your percent that you have on margin, your what's called kind of called your leverage, your overall leverage, uh, gets out of whack. Well, what does that trigger? So, um, and, and let me just go back. What I'm showing you is how this all connects. So buy and hold keeps the stock price up. If there's any, uh, you know, buy pressure, FOMO, whatever that comes in, or even just business results, the stock goes up. That means it, for a short, your position is down. You know, stock going up on the long side means your, your value, the value of your position has worsened if you're a short. And you gotta mark that to market, which means your assets go down, you get out of balance, so you have more on margin now. Well, that means now you have a reduction in your accessible cash and, and your debt. So this is messing with your margins is what I was just talking about. But now there's also external pressures. So this is where I was telling you apes knew what was coming a long time ago. We were talking about the Fed and tapering clear back in early 2021, uh, which really you know has still barely started. Kind of look at the whole reverse repo market and a whole uh, host of other things and the Fed's balance sheet and all of that. As the Fed starts tightening monetary policy, there's a lot less cash to go around. That's kind of the story of 2008 as well. Just think of um, you know, liquidity in the market as kind of this oil in the machine. You take oil out of a car and you just watch how many days it takes before the engine kind of grinds to a halt. So tapering is a big deal and it ripples throughout the economy in terms of how much debt people are um, comfortable allowing other people to have. And you start saying, hey, I might want you to rebalance your position. So as the Fed you know, gets into any kind of tapering, um, that was always going to be a big deal. And we've seen that start to put some pressure on. Um, and we were calling out increased interest rates. Again, clear back in 2021, that as interest rates go up, uh, you know, borrowing starts to be more expensive. And all of the formulas that banks and uh, big institutions use uh, basically see that that gets you over leveraged. So as your assets value has decreased, as tapering starts to happen, as interest rates go up, all of this was always going to put pressure on the shorts. And we all knew this you know, way back then, which is why we were always saying, I can hold, I can wait, and I can outweigh you because I know what's coming. And so they get over leveraged and out of balance. And that is what triggers a margin call. And so you can see the chain of events of why this is all related. And now, Go back to, um, you know, I've told you all that I worked in business, um, have two master's degrees in business. There, there's, a, there's a concept that some companies use, you know, maybe you've heard of like Six Sigma or you've heard of um, lean management or at Toyota, it could have been called like total, total quality. They're all flavors of some of the same thing. But there's a concept in, um, you know, how to really remove waste in business. And it's, you go back to the root cause of something. You go all the way back to the source. The reason I'm bringing that up, think about what we get pushed on. Uh, by Shorty. Think about all the psychological uh, push against us and all of the trolling and all of the bots. It's all attempted to get us to sell. So what do you think the source is of all of their problems, right? If you want to address the root cause, the bottom line, you just look at where someone's spending their time and energy. They're trying, so that's why I'm showing you it all started with buy and hold. If we won't go away, their problem doesn't go away. So now I'm continuing to go. All right, so we've worked our way all the way to margin call. I know I'm going through this fast. Go read that Reddit or um, just rewind here and go through again. So that margin call then, if you have enough cash, all right, you meet the margin call. What it basically says is you've got, I told you I even had that $1 one one time. So they're basically telling me, 
hey, you either need to put one more dollar in here or you need to sell enough positions to get back in balance to where we're not asking for that dollar anymore. So if you didn't have enough cash, now go back to that tapering and the increased rates, kind of reducing access to cash. Hey, there's that term again, access to capital. By the way, access to capital can work in a negative sense for shorty. What if they don't have enough capital? Well, if you can't meet the margin call with cash, you know what you do? You've got to close positions and you have to close enough positions until you're back in balance. Well, what does that mean if you're short? Closing a position means covering, but what does covering do? Uh-oh, that's actually buying. You buy to close a short position. That's more buying pressure. And notice how this becomes a self-feedback loop. If you could like, I gotta start using a camera at some point and I guess show my face, but if you saw me, I'm like using my fingers in this loop where they're just gonna now, oops, we got trapped and we're gonna go in circles. You're now starting to understand a little bit of the AMC overall thesis of what it's always been. But there's one really, really important piece I have not yet highlighted. You know what supercharges this whole thing? What absolutely puts like on 10 times the speed and puts it all on steroids? Profitability. So yes, buy and hold started the whole chain and buy and hold has kept it going. But the thing that is the nail in the coffin of this stupid vampire of corrupt shorts that are trying to suck the blood out of the marketplace is profitability. If AMC turns profitable and has positive cash flows, you know, I showed you a Reddit I posted clear back August of 2021, where that's ultimately what I said. If AMC gets to positive cash flows and ultimately positive earnings as well, it's kind of technically two different things. It's over. If you're a short and you, you're burning this cash daily and you know they're not going bankrupt and you know now they're even profitable and it's only going to keep going, at some point you just say, crap, I got to give up and you're out. So that matters. Now, let's tie this back to the vote here in a minute. If profitability is the real nail in the coffin that ends this whole thing, because even go back, let's say, let's say you're a short and even all this was happening and you're scrambling and it's going to get tough. But you probably go find, um, you go find capital. Remember when uh, Citadel borrowed, I want to say it was like even $6 billion or something like that, that for the first time ever they were bringing in outside investment. Um, you know, that was a sign to us that they needed capital, right? So all of this keeps coming back. Um, but let's say you're short, and even if it was really painful and you got in a lot of trouble, but if you knew, if you believed, let's say, forget no, if you still believed you could outweigh the apes and you could outweigh AMC itself. You know, would you rather suffer massive, massive losses to the point where you even maybe go out of business? Or would you rather keep kicking the can and try to find, even if it's corruption, some way out of this thing? But if AMC turns profitable, now you know mentally, go back to these like strategic board games or whatever. If you already know the end game, you're not going to sit there burning cash day in and day out because you already know where this is going to end. I love the movie Margin Call, actually, you know, where they talk about, hey, the music's about to stop. There comes a point where if AMC turns profitable enough, or even it doesn't have to today be profitable, you got to understand about finance, people in finance. They're not thinking about today. You know, Wall Street often prices, let's say, even at least six months into a stock. Or even look, uh, you know, recently I know Amazon was at like 70 years worth of profit were priced into the stock. If you look at something called a price to earnings ratio. Wall Street is not a today business. It's a looking forward, uh, you know, culture. And, and those were the types of jobs I had, uh, you know, when I worked. I, it was my job to think about, I was kind of even at a 9 to 18 months out, um, depending on which piece of the business you were looking at. And so if you're someone who's thinking about the future, but you already envision that future, and so in a way you live today for this future you already know is going to happen, right? Like if you knew that tomorrow, I don't know, a really big life event was gonna happen, you might already live today like that was happening, even though it ha it's in the future. So the point is, if AMC, if, if they see the writing on the wall, and honestly it's already there, that's why I've done other videos to show apes how profitability is coming um, and how I can demonstrate that through the fundamentals that's the whole point. You know, if they want to break us, I believe they're corrupt. I don't mind trying to break them too. And if I do that ethically and I do that with data and I'm sourcing it and I sort of logically show it, all the better. And so that's why I harp so much on fundamentals because I'm helping you see and I'm helping Shorty know that we all know 
the future is written on the wall, AMC is going to turn profitable. Believe this strongly, and that's what's ultimately going to break the shorts. Well, let's bring this back. Um, oops, I did this animation wrong. Okay, let's forget it. So, um, let's come back to my belief on how you beat the shorts. This ultimately connects to why I'm a yes on this conversion vote. Um, before I kind of cover all that, let me come back to, I just want to say time and time again, um, you know, if you're a, a reasonable, you know, um, a genuine ape, and you are going to be a no vote on this, you're going to get respect from me. Like, I, it's fine. Like, I want us to move together. I want us to affect change. Ultimately, for me, the bottom, bottom line that I really want to um, accomplish is free and fair markets. Uh, actually, transparent and fair markets, I should have said. Um, that, to me, is where I want to go, and I want to end corruption, I want to end cheating, and I want to end this just murky mess, and I want it to be transparent. You know, you could be a no vote and want transparency in markets, and you could be a yes vote and want transparency in markets, and that's why I want to be cautious here that I'm not looking to recruit, you know, people to my table and exclude others from my table or whatever, right? Um, so, but I am going to tell you just really clearly why I'm a yes vote and why I believe that relates to all. That's why I had to show you all of this thesis before. So first of all, um, I'm in the first blue box here. Access to capital means time. If AMC has time where... Um, shorts are burning cash by the day, then you understand time is not in the favor of the shorts. I've always looked at this as a runway. If you're flying a jumbo jet and you need to get it up in the air, you know, and let's say there's like a big wall or something, you just need that runway long enough that you can get the uh, jet up in the air to get over the wall, right? So I believe we've been trying to provide AMC the runway it needs, and Adam is busting his butt to turn this thing profitable. He's trying to get the plane up in the air. Um, there's an account uh, that I like who has kind of said, you know, listen, this guy's the pilot. I'm going to let him fly the plane. But, you know, so I'm saying yes, exactly to that. I'm letting him fly the plane, but I'm just working my butt off to kind of make sure he has the runway. Uh, and that's how we, you know, are symbiotic. And so if, if you're a short and you know that they have access to capital and they're not going bankrupt, and meanwhile you're burning cash, and I mentioned this idea of opportunity cost, it stinks to be in your position. You want to get out. That's pressure to get out. So you understand that I believe access to capital is a way that AMC wins and actually a way that we affect the squeeze. Therefore, I'm going to show you in a minute why I'm a yes. Um, cap second blue box. Capital also means you're one step closer to profits. So if you can invest in strategic opportunities, if you can roll out the popcorn business, if you can add a profitable uh, location, which I believe the Boston Arclight is going to be. I mean, I've talked in, in several videos about how that's about to open up. Adam needed cash to buy that property. Um, you know, we talked about how the Saudi Arabia business has been stood up, and now AMC is getting checks for, for that business and has gotten their seed money back. So that is new revenue they didn't have before COVID. Well, that took capital to build that, but guess what that also means? They're one step closer to profits because he's built more business He's added revenues. It's going to you know, make its way to the bottom line. So not only does access to capital buy time in terms of that defensive posture of, okay, we can pay the bills, we're not going bankrupt, but it also gives you the opportunity to be on the offense to create new areas of profit. And, and frankly, even if you pay off debt again, that reduces your interest payments um, and adds to the bottom line. So for me, it comes down to um, a healthy company destroys the short thesis. Well, Again, access to capital makes you healthy. Um, and then what is the strongest path to being a healthy company? That's how I arrive at, you know, how am I going to vote? So what you hear ultimately is if I want the squeeze, I believe a healthy company is the, the, the thing that makes the shorts say, good grief, i got to get out of this position. And so then I just ask myself, what's the strongest path to AMC being that healthy company that makes the shorts quit? And that's what informs my vote. My vote isn't about whether, you know, um, dilution this, dilution that, how many shares, all of that. You know, I presented the math on all of that because I saw a lot of people making that case. So I wanted to kind of, I don't know, add, add insight to, to the things I saw people arguing. But this tells you in a nutshell just these two things. I believe a healthy company destroys the short thesis. And so I ask myself, what's the best way for AMC to get there? And that ultimately, it's just that simple. That's how I'm going to vote. And so I'm going to walk through... Uh, sorry for the messed up animation. All right, I'm going to walk through how I get there. So, real quick. Oh, and by the way, we're finally to the slide two where I'm going to correct something I got wrong, um, and I want to just be real transparent about that. 
I will not be surprised if some trolls will end up using it. Uh, but you know what? I want to have the integrity to be real with you guys. I say no trust me bros around here. So if I use the word trust here, um, it's more like, am I someone that you feel comfortable listening to? You know, and then you're going to go do your own DD and check. But so if you're going to trust me at all, then I need to have the integrity to not just push a point of view, but also to kind of say when I get something wrong. So you, I'm going to share that here. We're going to go through that so that we have a right picture uh, and we have a whole picture. Um, <clears throat> but let me just kind of give you a couple of uh, just how I'm going to look at this. So you see on the far right here, you know, AMC today closed a little bit above six bucks. So I'm just going to use six bucks as kind of a, a I don't know, flag in the sand right now. You, you could always change this. You know, I just did this quickly in a spreadsheet, um, what I'm about to show you. Change this to whatever you want and kind of do your own math. I'm going to give you all the numbers. Um, I've sourced in other videos where all of these numbers are going to come straight from the AMC filings. I'm not making these up. Someone misunderstood me on one thing and said, oh, you're just making stuff up. I said, no, no, I got these from the filings. What I'm making up is like, you know, the $6 on the right, for example. Use whatever value you want to use. I'll explain kind of how I got there. And then uh, why 67 cents on APE? If you remember, so um, what I'm going to talk about, you kind of see the title at the top here, like a no vote, is you're really saying um, you want APE to be the capital, the access to capital that AMC has. And that's what was happening, right? Adam was selling, so the Antara deal, and before that, frankly, like remember the Odeon uh, refinance deal and the work with Citigroup, um, AMC was using APE as its capital. And Adam, you know, he was up front with us. He said that when he created it, he said, uh, he called it a currency, in fact. So this was the AMC's currency and a way to get access to capital. So if you vote no, I, I guess I just want to be really clear, you, you need to make sure that you're, you have decided you're actually voting yes to something else. You're voting yes to, I want Adam to use APE whenever AMC needs a little more cash, whether for investment, debt management, whatever. You are, there's going to be access to capital. Look at my video from before the holidays. I kind of walked through that. Um, you're really voting yes to him using APE is what you're doing. You're not voting no to no more shares. You're voting yes to using APE. That, I, I feel strongly about that. I'm going to show you, show you that in a minute. So on the yes side, I'm just giving that the title of you're saying, okay, for that access to capital instead of APE, I want him to use um, post-conversion AMC. That's then why I'm kind of having this $6 and the 67 cents and whatever. So what were the numbers? We walked through this in another video, but here you go. Right now, AMC, and this is in their filing for the vote. You can find these numbers. AMC, there's uh, the 517 and change that's out there, but actually what's authorized is 524 plus. And so then you can see that's why I'm saying there's this remaining AMC, this six and a half million. Um, APE, what's been issued, that's the 929, almost 930. But then actually already he has another 70 million shares of APE he could uh, sell into the market. So <clears throat> without any additional uh, preferred equity shares, uh, he's got, we've got basically one and a half billion shares out there. Um, we talked about in the other vote video, the first, uh, first one recently, if you don't remember, and you can go back to the filings last summer when APE was announced, uh, and I believe it's even in the prospectus. This goes all the way back to 2013. There were uh, 50 million ape, sorry, not ape. There were 50 million preferred equity shares that were the the board has the authority to issue. 10 million of those are what was used to create ape, which is why there's a billion ape. And the reason was a preferred equity share is worth 100 uh, shares of AMC. And remember, ape is one to one with AMC. So they used 10 out of their 50. If they were to use the other 40 million, that would be the equivalent of 4 billion APE. So you can see all of this is in millions here. So even now, if you vote no, he has access to 4 billion more. He could go create more APE. And obviously, um, I'm going to talk in a minute as well on how if we really think that's going to stay at 67 cents. Like, the more you dilute, the farther down it goes, right? So um, it, it would all depend on what the market's going to hold up, but, but hold that thought. So... Just to be really clear, if you've missed any of my other videos, if you don't know, right now, as from 2013, way before the apes came along, the board was given authority to issue what would now be another four billion worth of ape. It's, it's 40 million preferred equity shares that are worth 100 shares each. So just be really clear. That's why I'm saying if you vote no to this conversion, 
they're not going to turn around and say, well, golly, I guess we'll just hope profits come in time and see if we don't go bankrupt. Adam's also been very, very clear. He's like, under my watch, this company is not going bankrupt. And I applaud him for that because he's making sure he doesn't default his um, you know, debt holders. He's making sure he doesn't default us stockholders. And he's making sure he does right by his employees. That is ethical business leadership and another mark of someone that I believe I can trust. Okay, But we as shareholders, you know, we can trap him too. And that's why I believe you're pushed to vote no, because now... He's going to have far more dilutive uh, capital, which is going to be the use of ape. We'll come back to that. So if you vote yes, um, let me show you where these numbers come from. So, you know, you get, and again, you can get this in the in the vote filing. So there's the 517 uh, ape, I mean, AMC that already exists, the 930 ape. That adds up. That's this 1447. So one point, basically 1.45 billion shares that are um I'm showing this pre-reverse split, so just divide by 10 in your head to get to a reverse split number, because I want to compare apples to apples here. Uh, so, you know, ape goes away, so you see like a zero on this line. The ape rolls up into that AMC line. That's the whole point of the conversion. Uh, but then we're voting on 550 million shares, you'll see in the, um, the filing, which means there is this 4 billion remaining AMC. But look at how that number ties. And this is going to get into well, one mistake I made, but here I'm going to say it correctly. Right now, he could issue these 4 billion uh, ape equivalent shares. Plus he has this 70 million, plus he has this 6.5 million. So that all adds up. It's actually a bigger number than this number up here. And so I had made the case that I believed you know he had access to less shares with a yes vote, and I was comparing that. Um, but the issue is I had missed in the filing that they are still going back to that 50 million um, preferred equity shares. And so you get to a pretty big number here. And, and I will not be surprised if there are some apes who balk at that number. Um, that if you add up what he's going to have in AMC and what he's going to have in uh, the preferred equity side, that it's a big number. I'll say my opinion. Now I've got to just be super, super clear this is opinion and you know some will disagree with me. I do not believe he's going to use the, those preferred equity shares. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm basing that on opinion. I'm being super upfront with you on that. But uh, I still want to talk about access to capital because whether he uses them or not, come back to, uh, to me, it's a side argument. It, it's a distraction. And Shorty's going to use that against us and get us just going on and on about the share count instead of, again, what beats the short thesis? Access to capital and profitability. And so let's actually just go through the math here. If you vote no, and so you say, all right, I, he's still going to need cash to run the company, then you understand um, this idea. I think not, it's not going to be too hard to get to. So let's just say, you know, he wanted to pay off another $100 million of debt, or they had, um, you know, a $100 million investment they needed to make, or they just needed $100 million of cash for operations. So I'm showing you how many shares would that take. Well, that would take 149 million shares um, to get $100 million. If you're saying, no, I want you to continue using APE, then I, I would just believe he's going to you know, come out with another round of these preferred equity shares and turn them into more APE or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you know, he's not going to let the company go bankrupt, and he has the authority to do this, and ethically he, he should use it. So uh, he would have to sell 149 million shares of APE at 67 cents is what I'm using. That's why I showed this. Um, but here's where I'm acknowledging it would probably be even more dilutive than that. Probably have to sell even more shares than this for every $100 million. But if we vote yes, and he's selling at six bucks a share, um, and again, I'm not using reverse split here, so just on either of these, I just want to stay apples to apples. If he's selling at six bucks a share, you can see he only needs to sell basically um, you know what, uh, I need to adjust the math here. I used to have $5 per share uh, when I did this. So how about that? We'll, we'll even go ahead and say it is dilutive right off the bat. We'll even be favorable um, and make the yes vote look even worse than it actually is. And uh, he's got to sell um, 20 million shares, uh, and that's the difference. What I actually did in the spreadsheet, though, is I, in the spreadsheet version, I do have it at 6. I just didn't change this 20. Um, and so it really it's, what is it, like 16.66 or something? Here, tell you what, pull out my calculator. Um, 
Oops. Well, you know, the, before the video derails here, um, I'll go check that later. But uh, the point is, I know this 89% number is right. I had plugged that into my spreadsheet. And um, if he needs access to $100 million, uh, then he basically would have 90% uh, reduction in dilution. You would sell so many less shares um, to get to, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it, it's what I said. It'd be 16.67%. Sorry, just on the fly here, uh, got a little flustered and did the wrong thing on my calculator. But so just change that 20 in your mind to 16.67. Um, that's how many million shares he'd have to sell to get $100 million if it was six bucks a share. Again, I'm acknowledging openly there would be dilution. There, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get to just flood the market with six dollars, you know, per share. But I just want to compare apples to apples, so we know he was selling ape at sixty-seven cents. That's where we had gotten. If ape is the answer, and we know right now, as of today, AMC closed, you know, above six bucks. So, in this case, that's an eighty-nine percent reduction in dilution, basically ninety percent. So that's where I mean, I could almost stop right here if I just say, listen, I believe they need access to capital either for debt payments, cash flow, investments, uh, reducing debt, any of those things. And, and here, Shorty, I really don't care if he said them or not. It's just obvious. You know, I'm a, I'm a business guy. I have two masters in business. Those are the things you do with capital. Like, what else are you going to do? Swim in it in a pool? So you can just stop trolling about that one. Oh, he hasn't said that. Whatever. He's leading a business. He's not a dummy. Those are the things you use capital for, and those are the things that kill the short thesis. And if he can sh sell 90% less shares, guys, please let that sink in. A yes vote in this case, if you believe in my logic, and it's okay to challenge it, you'd say, oh, there's more dilution or whatever, but there's dilution on both the left and right side of this. If you, if you think about accounting, there's sort of something called dual entry accounting, where you know if you're gonna change the left side of something, you gotta change the right side. So in this case, that means I'm really treating them both fairly. I'm not applying dilution to either side. Um, but based on what we know about how he's going to be able to get that access to capital, he could sell 90% less shares to do the things I've said, beat the short thesis. I, it's an easy yes for me, even with you know, the fact that these shares are, are so much. Then the other thing is, what is the total access to capital? So at that 67 cents, um, and then I did not change the, uh, this, actually I did change this bottom line. Um, at that 67 cents and at that $6, uh, you can see, you know, he, we, he's got access to a little over $2 billion now. If we sort of do nothing, it's kind of the do nothing vote. If you're a no vote, you're saying I don't want any change. Um, if we vote yes, his total uh, access to capital is almost $30 billion. Uh, again, that's honestly, that number is wrong. Like I'm telling you, there would be dilution. You wouldn't really get to that number. I just want to apply the math the same to both of these columns. So think of it more in terms of like a, a sizing difference as opposed to what's the exact right number. And just want to be really clear about that before I get trolled. Um, I'm just giving you kind of a, a difference in sort of the the overall scope of, of a yes versus a no. I'm not saying literally this is the number, but I'm saying this is the idea of a number. And in this case, it's 900% increase in how much capital he could have. So if I get a 90% reduction in dilution, and I know even if he doesn't use it, so like I'm claiming that I believe he would not use most of these shares. But again, get in the mind of a short and you go, good grief, he's got that much access to financing. If I wake up tomorrow morning and he's done any of these things, bought another company, uh, cleared out debt, invested in you know new revenue streams, invested in new properties. I may wake up and my short position is just shot all to heck and I am screwed. That's why it starts to make them quit. So you know those of you arguing for a no vote, what I'd love for you to start doing is don't just blindly say, well, it's more shares and I want the squeeze. Like, Think through what is going to actually create the end game of the squeeze. And then ask yourself, which one of these two scenarios best brings us to that end game? For me, it's just a, honestly a no-brainer. It's a yes vote. But I also wanted to have the integrity to tell you I missed that the, it wasn't just the 550 million we're voting on, which would be this line here. It was also the 50 million of preferred equity that he, they're still going to have. So 
Uh, so I wanted to be clear and correct the record on that one. And thank you to some of you who caught that and shared that with me in pretty respectful ways. I really appreciate that. And that's what I'd said on the other video, like, hey, don't just trust me, like, go do the DD. And some of you did and, and caught that. So I apologize for getting that wrong. But uh, I hope you can see why just, it does not change my point of view. I am still clearly a yes vote. Which brings me all the way back. Finishing thoughts here. The thesis always was, I can hold longer than you can stay solvent. Or, you know, there was kind of the original Wall Street bets, a little bit more crude way of saying it, if you want to go back to that. So I'm asking you apes, how long do you want to hold? And which of these two paths do you think ends the game a lot quicker? Let's go.